All right, so we have another problem here to deal with, but we're gonna tackle this in a very just chill way. Number one, we're gonna go ahead and read the question sentence first. And the question sentence says, if this percentage joins robotics and this percentage joins art with no overlap, how many students are in either club? Okay, so let's go ahead here, my party people. We are gonna read that question sentence, but we're gonna ignore all of that extra information right there. We're gonna ignore that. We're gonna go straight over here. The who, what, when, where, how many, which of the following, that's where the question starts. And it says, how many students are in either club? Everybody, when they discuss this after you've read this, is it fair to say when they say, hey, how many students are in either club? We're talking about students in robotics and in art. Is that fair to say? Good, and more importantly, more importantly, here's how we're gonna interpret this. To find out how many students are in either club, especially if they have no overlap, really what we're being asked to do, long story short, is we're asked to find the number of students in robotics plus the number of students in art. That's it right there. If you can find the number of students in robotics and the number of students in art, you are done because all you have to do is add them together. Now, I'm gonna perform the solution to this problem in two ways, two ways. Number one, I'm gonna show you if we calculate robotics and art and then add them together. And then the other way I'm gonna show you, it's gonna be much faster, but let me go ahead and get through the first way first before I show you that other way. So here we are. Let's go ahead and look at robotics. So for robotics, I noticed that robotics was 18% of our student population and we have 2,400 students total. So for robotics, this is going to be 18% of 2,400. And so once we do that, everybody, a quick little mental math trick, when we try to turn the percentage into a decimal, we can leave it as 18 and we can move the decimal twice over here. So instead of 2,400, it's 24. As long as we move the decimal twice on one of these two, we're good. So now we have 18 times 24. Let me do that right over here. 18 times 24, eight times four is 32, carry the three. One times four is four, carry the three is seven. Add a zero for the next row. And we have eight times two is 16, carry the one. And then we have one times two is two, carry the one is three. Add this back and we have two, seven plus six is 13. And then that's four. So we have 432 for robotics. All right, everybody, we're gonna continue on with art now. Everybody, what was the percentage of students that joined art? That percentage was 27, absolutely, there it is, right there. 27% joined art. So we'll do 27% times the 2400, but when we convert it, we can just convert right here. So we can do 27 times 24. So I'll go ahead and do that right over here, 27 times 24. If you're noticing that this is taking a little long, well, guess what? Again, I'm gonna show you the faster way in a moment. So we have seven times four is 28. Two times four is eight, carry the two is 10. Then from here, we'll bring that zero. And then from there, we have seven times two is 14, carry the one. Two times two is four, carry the one is five. So that becomes eight, four, and six. So 648. Everybody, what did we say we would do? It's right here at the top. We are gonna take robotics and art and just add them together. Exactly what we said we would do. So here it is, the final answer, 432 plus 648. Two plus eight is 10, carry the one. Then we have three plus four plus one is eight. Four plus six is 10. So there it is. The total number here is 1,080 between robotics and art. But everybody, before we move on, I really wanna show you the difference between knowing one way to do it and knowing the best way to do it. Let me show you the best or better way in this case. 
So let me just highlight all of this. Let's move all of this out of here. Let's make this even smaller. And let me show you here. Everybody, we had 18% were robotics. Then we had 27%, which was art. Watch this neat little trick, everybody. Because we know that they don't overlap, we are able to add these percentages in the same way we added the actual amounts in the same exact way. So let me show you this. This is actually pretty neat. Everybody, what is 18 plus 27 going to give us? 18 plus 27 gives us what? 8 plus 7 is 15. Carry the 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. Carry the 1 is 4. 45% is going to be either robotics or art. Now watch what we can do now. We're going to do 45% of the 2400. And look at how much sense this is going to make, how much faster this is going to happen. We're going to use that same little mental math trick to not do 0.45, but instead just make this a 24. So we have 45 times 24. And let's see what that's going to give us. 45 and 24 multiplied together. 5 times 4 is 20. 4 times 4 is 16. Carry the 2. And that's 18. Next, we'll go to the next line with a 0 here. We have 5 times 2, and that's going to be 10. Carry the 1. 4 times 2, that's going to be 8. Carry the 1 is 9. Okay, 0. Then we have 8 plus 0 is 8. 1 plus 9 is 10. My party people, did we get the same correct answer with half of the headache? Absolutely. Absolutely. While there are plenty of other ways we could attempt to do this problem, this right here, if you don't have a calculator, this is the fastest way. Add those percentages together so you understand the percent that represents robotics and art together. Once you understand that, boom, then you can calculate with that combined percentage and you are done. Let's go ahead and handle our next question here. So the first thing that I'm going to read as always is going to be that question sentence for those of us that are watching uh, one of these first videos here. So again, we're not going to go ahead and read all the way through that first sentence. It's the question sentence. What is its area in square feet? So with that said, everybody, we've said it before. We'll say it again. We know area is going to be what I'm going to highlight. But whenever I see that we're including area inside of a word problem, my party people, do you think that it would help to immediately ask what shape we're dealing with? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It is worth every moment of thought to think about, hey, if I'm talking about area, I know that different shapes have different formulas. So I'm going to think about hey, what shape am I dealing with? And that's right over here. That's a rectangle. So my party people, give it to me. What is the area formula for a rectangle? What's it going to be? It's going to be the area equals the length times the width. That's right. It's the product of the length and the width together. And so all we have to do is see if we're given that length and width, plug it in and we're good. But if we have to do a little bit more work to figure out what they are, no worries. That's fine. We'll figure it out. So here it says a rectangular sheet is 14 feet long length and nine feet wide. And that's the width. So I'll go ahead and plug these values in and then calculate. Length is 14. The width is nine. And when I calculate, I have 14 times nine. Four times nine is 36. Carry the three. One times nine is nine. Carry the three is 12. And so that'll give me 126. And because we did perform feet multiplied by feet, the final answer will be in square feet. So this would be 126 square feet, which gives the correct answer option as answer choice C.